Hello, Dora the Explorer is asking a question. Okay, thank you. So <laughs> today, uh, uh, we're going to be continuing our discussion into talking about uh, this particular Pascal. Pascal, I, I think his first name is Philip, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so Pascal uh, is this guy that came up with this principle to to describe, uh, okay, the pressure that is in a fluid. Okay, fluid doesn't only refer to liquid. Okay, they are bukan sahaja liquids. Huh? What am I writing? My goodness. Okay, they are bukan sahaja merujuk kepada liquid, tetapi dia juga merujuk kepada gas. Okay, because they are not benda yang boleh mengalir. Things that can flow, huh? okay, are called fluids. Okay, and liquid and gas are basically fluids lah, because they can flow. Okay, because of that, Pascal's principle, okay, is a principle that explains uh, how fluid pressure works. Okay, so we're not limiting ourselves now to liquid, but we're also talking about gas pressure. Walaupun kebanyakan daripada contoh yang kita akan bincangkan pada hari ini, banyak merujuk kepada uh, liquid lah. Okay, memang kita akan banyak bercakap pasal liquid. Okay, but I need you to keep in mind uh, the original pressure formula. Okay, so pressure is a force over an area. So when that you learn from three, when you do nine because of today. Okay, so Pascal's principle uh, states that when an enclosed fluid has to be done, okay. It will transmit uniformly in all directions in the fluid. Okay, and the best example uh, of Pascal's principle is toothpaste. Okay, when you when you press the toothpaste, right? Okay, uh, no matter how hard you press the toothpaste, uh, well, toothpaste is a problem. Okay, toothpaste. So let's say uh, you press the toothpaste, uh, okay, you find uh, that uh, inside the toothpaste. Okay, the toothpaste inside lah. Okay, is an example of an enclosed fluid. They are the satu liquid. Okay, atau satu yang boleh in an enclosed space. Okay, dia tertutup. Kecuali lubang yang di hujung itulah. Okay, kecuali lubang yang di hujung itu. And so we find that when we put the pressure on a particular part of the toothpaste, it will the pressure will be transmitted or transferred. Okay, atau dipindahkan lah. Okay, it will be transmitted uniformly. Okay, across all the fluid. Okay, seperti macam dia kena karan 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 lah. This is a very bad example lah. Tapi dia macam kena karan 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 lah. You press at one place, but the pressure will be transferred in all the directions of the fluid. And this principle is very important to us because a lot of our technology today. Okay, just like everything in this chapter lah. A lot of our technology today really uh, uses Pascal's principle. Okay, and one that you can see is over here lah. Okay, uh, not sure if you can see this old man is pressing on this one untuk mengasih naik ini kerusi. This is like, let's say for example, you go to a barber, uh, uh, tukang gunting rambut makan. So some people who are very tall uh, like Lester lah, okay, Wilson. So you need to make the chair shorter so that, you know, so that the barber can cut your hair lah. Okay, and some people who are not so tall, okay, I'm not going to say who, okay, you have to kasi angkat itu kerusi ya, so that the barber can reach your hair, so that he doesn't have to like bongko over lah. But that one lah, the chair, okay, macam mana dia boleh naik dan turun, okay, uses Pascal's principle, okay, for that. Even yang kerusi yang the office lah, the chairs that you see in the office, right, the one where you pull the lever, then you think you go down one, okay, and then when you let go the lever, or when you hold it up, it will come back up again, right. Okay, it all uses Pascal's principle, and you find uh, that, and, and you find uh, that when you go up and you go down, right, you don't suddenly do that. You don't suddenly drop, you know, right? You will slowly drop. Uh, I mean, well, kalau dia punya kerusi ada sangat bagus bahkan, you will slowly drop lah. Okay, and very uniformly. Okay, because what is happening uh, is that the pressure is being transferred, okay, very uniformly in all the directions of the fluid. If the fluid, uh, if the pressure uh, is not transferred uniformly, then what's going to happen uh, is, you know, they tekan saja satu butang, terus kau tebak macam tu lah. 
Dia terus kau terjatuh macam tu which we don't want lah. It's not very good right. If you actually are sitting on the chair then terus kau kena terkejut macam itu. It's not very good lah. Okay but those are basic principles of users of Pascal's principle. Okay so this is another one lah. Let's say uh, you buy a uh, I don't know, nowadays, so now the in thing lah, saya nampak lah, yang trending sekarang is uh, fighting fish. You guys know what's fighting fish? What's fighting beta, fish? Beta, beta. Ah, uh, beta. Ikan laga, ikan laga. <laughs> yeah, okay, so fighting fish lah, when you buy fighting fish, right, so you keep it inside a plastic. I mean, yeah lah, I know, you kasi pindah dalam aquarium ke apa, but when you first buy fish lah, usually the fish seller, sorry ah, fish yang masih hidup, okay, not fish yang sudah mati yang kau mau makan, it's the fish that is still living lah. So you buy it and usually you put it in a plastic bag, kan? Okay, so the water inside the plastic bag uh, is an example of an enclosed fluid. Okay, the water is the fluid and it is an enclosed space lah. Selagi kau tidak buka di atas lah. Okay, and let's say uh, you, let, let's say lah, uh, you want to test and see the liquid pressure of the water in the bag. So you start to poke holes in the bag lah. Okay, kau cucuk-cucuk lubang di dalam bag plastik tersebut. Of course the fish will be like, kenapa ni? Kenapa kau cucuk lubang? Okay, and then you start to panic lah. But when you poke the holes, okay, you will find uh, that the, the, oh no, am I supposed to, oh not yet, okay. You find uh, that when you poke the holes, the water uh, all will come out, okay, at the same rate, you know, provided you poke with the same uh, hole size lah. Okay, and this is what I want to mention also. So, what ramai orang yang macam, eh, kenapa ini? Does the whole size affect the liquid pressure? We talk about this in uh, later lah. But we find out that when we poke the holes, provided that the holes are the same size lah, okay, we find that all the liquid lah, is transmitted uniformly. No matter whether the hole is down here, near to the top, or whether the hole is up here, uh, sorry, further from the top, or whether the hole is up here, where it's nearer to the top. Sini yang kamu tekan lah kan, usually you press from the top of the bag lah. Kan? So even if the hole is nearer to where the force is, okay, or if the hole lah is far from where the force is, you find lah that the water that comes out, okay, it will come out at the same rate. Okay, it will come out uniformly lah. And that's a very important proof lah of Pascal's principle. Okay, remember lah, fluid, enclosed fluid lah, pressure will be transmitted uniformly in all directions. So whether your hole is far away from tempat yang kamu tekan atau dekat dengan tempat yang kamu tekan, tekanan itu akan sama rasa. Sama rasa. <laughs> the, yalah, the pressure will be felt uniformly. Okay, it is the perfect example lah, of ringan sama di jinjing. Okay, somebody memberi tekanan kepada kamu, makan all the lubang, all the pressure will be distributed uniformly. Okay, it is the best principle in the world because it's a fairness principle. No? Dia adalah principle yang sangat seimbang. Okay, it's not like group project bahkan. <laughs> group project ah, satu orang je, no. Apa, semua member buat kerja kecuali satu orang. Oh, that's the worst kind of group to have. I don't know if you have any experience with this, but it's not the best experience. Okay, everybody's working ah, tapi satu orang saja yang, ah, okay lah, okay lah, saya ikut sejalah kamu. <sighs> okay, but no, Pascal's principle ah, is very fair. Okay, if somebody feels the pressure, everybody feels the pressure. If one hole feels the pressure, the rest of the holes uh, must feel that same pressure. Okay, because the pressure is transferred uniformly. Okay, across the whole enclosed liquid. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, so this is a tube. Okay, and then there's a piston over here. Lah. So we fill it with water. This is a rubber balloon. So we poke some holes into the balloon. Okay. Pok, 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 pok. <laughs> it's about the same size lah. Okay. When we push the piston downwards, okay, what, what will happen is we exert pressure into this one and we find that the pressure, every single hole, okay, yeah, water comes out with the same force. Okay, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to say, it's not the same force, it's the same pressure. Okay, it's going to come out with the same pressure. Okay, so this one, I don't want you to get confused with liquid pressure. Remember, we said the relationship between pressure and the height of the liquid. So when you think about it, if let's say this is the balloon, okay, sepatutnya, this hole, the height is less. So sepatutnya dia punya pressure adalah 
uh, rendah. Manakala, this hole over here, the height is more, right? bigger H. But so the pressure should be higher, should be lah. Okay, but this is a different case altogether. Okay, now we're talking about Pascal's principle. Lah. Okay, so this one is because there is a force, kita mengenakan satu pressure, because we are the one that is pushing on the pressure, we are applying the pressure. So this pressure yang kita kenakan will be transferred equally, okay, across all directions. Okay, that's Pascal's principle. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> so we use Pascal's principle uh, in this system called the hydraulic system. Uh. Okay, if you are familiar with the word hydraulics, uh, hydraulics is a very important uh, technology that we use these days. Uh, many, many things. Okay, not just the kerusi office yang kamu boleh naik turun. Uh, not just the kerusi gunting rambut yang boleh naik turun. Uh, no, many, many things use hydraulics. Okay, in fact, uh, roller coasters, okay, you know the roller coaster thing, right? Also uses a hydraulic system. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever seen have you ever said or you ever seen uh, the one yang uh, I can't remember what is it called. It's like it's like a rocket lah. Okay, so you sit down here, then they akan bawa kamu naik tau. They akan bawa kamu naik. Sorry, I don't know if you can see my pen lah. Okay, so you, they akan bawa kamu naik all the way here kan. Then lepas itu kan, when you're up here, at the highest point kan, you can see everything all around you lah. You're like, wow, bestnya, indahnya pemandangan ini. Okay, and then suddenly without a warning ah, tiba-tiba kamu jatuh. I mean, yalah, they, they will jatuhkan kamu and then they will angkat kamu balik and then they will jatuh you. But ah, if you've ever sat on that before lah, you will hear behind you ah, banyak bunyi push, 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 begitu bah. Okay, because there is a hydraulic system ah, there is a hydraulic system behind you that is working ah, to make sure that kamu, bila kamu turun, bahkan kau tidak terus turun and then jatuh ke bawah, bah, you are stop lah. Okay, there is something that is stopping you and then naik balik and then turun balik and then naik balik. Oh, I really need to go and find, yeah, okay, I need to go and find a video of this lah. Okay, then you hear one or you hear this very loud sound one, psh, 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 okay, because that's all the gas uh, that's being used, okay, to support the hydraulic system so that you can have a fun time riding roller coasters. Sorry, I don't know how many of you are fans of roller coasters. I like riding roller coasters, actually. Uh, oh, Michelle likes them. Okay, fine. So the rest of you are like, oh, I la roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. Roller coaster is fine. Okay, anyway, so we use a hydraulic system. The most important use of a hydraulic system uh, is to multiply the force. Okay, because remember, uh, the pressure is the same. The force is not. Okay, remember this, when you're talking about princi Pascal's principle, the pressure is the same, but the force is not. Okay, and we will see how we use this. Lah. So hydraulic system is a system that uses a liquid to transmit pressure. What we are memindahkan, lah, apa yang kita pindahkan, bukanlah daya, tetapi tekanan. We are transferring pressure, not force. But it is the pressure that causes the force. I hope, remember this. Lah. Okay, I'm transferring pressure, by using the hydraulic system, but we create the force because of the pressure. Okay, so a force acting on, on a small piston can produce a large force on the large piston. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again because this is a very important point. Lah. Okay, a piston, okay, so I'm going to show you this. Astaga. Sorry, please ignore all the ugly, okay. So this is a model of a very basic hydraulic system, which you can actually do at home. Okay, uh, so you just have, need to have these two things, okay, dua pichagari kecil, uh, two syringes, one small and one big. Okay, is this a video? Oh, yeah, okay, so it's a silicon tube or you can use the pipe. You can even use the same pipe that you use for the siphon. If you really want to do this, can, can be done. Man. Okay, and there is, uh, there is water. This is not air, this is air, okay, water inside over here. So this is the small piston. Ombo dalam bahasa Melayu is piston, uh, bahasa Inggris is piston. Ombo besar, this is a big piston. Okay, so what happens is, hold on, wonder whether there's a next. Okay, so if I put a 50 gram mass, uh, okay, over here, okay, so I'm going to mengenakan satu daya yang kecil. I'm going to put a small force onto the small piston. Okay, and what's going to happen is, it's going to be balanced uh, by this bigger force over here. It's about 150 grams. 
Okay, so we find that the fifty gram, uh, the the fifty gram uh, mass, okay, can balance uh, the hundred and fifty gram mass, okay, and you find that the water level is still the same. Okay, pemberat berslot yang kecil dapat menggerakkan pemberat berslot yang besar. Yeah, so when we add more mass over here, just a little bit more, we find that see the water levels are different already. Okay, so how is this possible? No? You use something small to move something that is very big. Did you see that last one just now? You just add a little bit more force. Okay, and then you are able to move something that is very big. One of the best users uh, of hydraulic system uh, is the car jack. You know, when you go to, let's say if you go to mechanic, uh, I, I'm not sure if, how many of you uh, have parents who are mechanics. Uh, uh, if you have a parent who is a mechanic, uh, you definitely understand this. Uh. So you move the car inside, right? Macam mana kau kasi naik baik itu kereta? Okay, how you, do you move the entire car up? You know? okay. So we use this thing called the hydraulic system. Okay, and what the hydraulic system does, exactly like the system just now, I'm not sure how. So what the hydraulic system does is, this is the car, uh. Okay, you put the car over here, fine. So all you have to do uh, is just kamu mengenakan a very small force. Okay, small force on the small piston. Okay, and what you're going to have is you're going to have this pressure one over here. Okay, because force over area, remember, uh, pressure is equals to force over area. So when there's a force and there's an area over here, you're going to have this pressure. And this pressure, according to Pascal's principle, will be transmitted. Dia akan dipindahkan, dihantar, okay, uniformly uh, throughout the hydraulic fluid. So, the pressure over here is going to be transferred. Okay, transfer, 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 until it comes to this big, this big piston over here. Okay, the pressure is the same. Okay, whatever pressure that they can di sini is the same pressure that is dirasai di sini, except that because the piston is so big, uh, okay, and you no know, the pressure is there, it's going to generate a very big force, and that's why kamu punya kereta boleh naik, and that's the amazing thing uh, about the hydraulic system, you know, kamu mengenakan sedikit usaha saja, terus kamu punya hasil sangat banyak, and it's like a it's like a scam, <laughs> kan? Kamu kamu bagi duit sedikit saja, terus kau punya dapatan sangat banyak. Okay, but Pascal's principle is basically like that. Okay, you only need to push a little bit, nah, terus kau punya kereta boleh angkat tinggi sudah. Okay, you kenakan a very big force. Okay, that is able to lift the car. Okay, and that's why we call this a force multiplier. Okay, let's say ah, uh, kamu kenakan one newton of force lah. Okay, what you may get now, you may get up to 100 newtons of force that will push the car up. And that's why we call this a force multiplier. Okay, kamu menggandakan daya. You make the force that you give much bigger by using the help of the hydraulic fluid. Okay, I'm going to talk about this hydraulic fluid in a while. Okay, cecair uh, hydraulic. Okay, the hydraulic fluid actually helps you to make the force bigger. And how does it make the force bigger? By transferring the pressure to the bigger piston. Okay, so that's a very important thing uh, that you should remember. Lah. That's why it's called a force multiplier. Okay, kamu memberi sedikit daya, terus dia punya daya itu, uh, the force uh, will be multiplied and made much bigger. Okay, it's so much better than kalau kamu satu orang yang angkat itu kereta bahkan tanpa bantuan hydraulic fluid. <laughs> Okay, how much force can you actually apply? Lah? Okay, so that's the one of the very biggest uses okay, of hydraulic system. Okay, so in terms of the formula, so we have the input piston. Lah, okay, so the pressure on the input piston will be F in over A in, okay, which is over here. Lah. So this is the force in the input piston, and then this is the area okay, of the input piston. The output piston will have the same output force over output area. And according to Pascal's principle, the input piston pressure must be equal to the output piston pressure. That's Pascal's principle. Pressure is transmitted equally and uniformly throughout the fluid. Okay, that's why we can get this formula. F in over A in equals to F out over A out. Then when we pinda pinda 
So we can get this lah. Okay, F out equals to A out over A in times F in doesn't matter. Okay, but we the second thing we need to know is the multiplying factor. Berapa kali ganda dia punya force? <coughs> berapa kali ganda dia punya force kena meningkat? Okay, it is the output area over the input area. Just remember output over input lah. Okay, if you want to know how much is the multiplying factor. Okay. So uh, later we will discuss. Uh, later we will discuss lah. Uh, okay, uh, a few examples that use this formula. But I just want to tell you this formula. It's a very simple formula actually. Pre input pressure equals to the output pressure. That's the basic fundamental of it. Okay, input pressure equals to output pressure. Chumab over area. Okay, so one of the biggest users of the hydraulic system is our car brake. So this year, so remember last year, and then last year you're all talking about this brake gun, this this whole, you know, because one of the aspects that your design had was the type of brake that you were going to use. So some of you talked about this. Lah. Some of you talk about hydraulic brakes. I don't know how many of you remember. It feels like so long ago. Uh, some of you, of course, talk about different kinds of brakes. Lah. Okay, but uh, in your syllabus, okay, in the thing that you are currently needing to know, okay, we need to talk about the hydraulic brake system, which is used in cars, okay, in vehicles, in cars, uh, not so much bicycle, okay, but you usually use the hydraulic brake system in vehicles. Lah. Okay, so this is a basic uh, brake system, okay, in our this one. So this is the pedal yang biasanya pemandu tekan lah. But underneath the pedal, there's a master cylinder, okay. So if you remember the 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 simple hydraulic system just now, Bakan. Okay, so this is the small piston and this is the large piston. Okay, so you imagine this now, you have this master cylinder, which is usually not that big, okay, it's quite small, but you press on this. When you press the brake pedal, what's going to happen is this master cylinder is going to have, it's going to be tekan. Okay, and inside all these yellow pipes, are these things called brake fluid? Okay, brake fluid is uh chai brake lah, brake brake liquid lah. Okay, uh, some people call it brake water lah. It's actually not water, lah, okay, but, but we call it brake fluid. I will talk about this fluid in a little while. So what's gonna happen is because kamu tekan di sini, all the pressure according to Pascal's principle, all the pressure is going to be transferred equally, okay, into the different different brakes in your car. Okay. Now, I want you to notice uh, that in the car, there are two types of brake systems, actually. There is the disc brake and there is the drum brake. Okay, and the disc brake is for the front wheels. Okay, kita pakai disc brake for the front wheels and we use drum brake uh, for the back wheel. There are reasons for this. Lah. Okay, there are reasons for this and I think one or two, actually quite a number of you spoke about this in your project last year. Like, why do you use brake drum for the back? Why do you use this drum, uh, this brake for the front? Okay, but basically the disc brake uh, is like kamu punya brake pasikal. You know, when you tekan, then the thing akan mencengkam bahkan dari tepi. That's the brake. That's the... Eh, hold on. Is that the disc brake? Yeah, they're macam this. Oh, sorry, that's the brake pad. Okay, which is usually the brake, which usually touches the brake disc lah. Okay, so... Front of the car, the two front wheels usually use a disc brake system, and the back two wheels uh, use a drum brake system. It's slightly different. Uh. So this is the, the kind of the situation uh, which happens, and this is how Pascal's principle is used. When you press on the brake, okay, the brake pedal actually pushes the piston, and the piston will push the brake fluid, and the pressure will be felt equally okay, among all the four... Uh, the four bricks, okay, the four wheels, lah, okay, the four wheels of the brake. Except that in this case, this all these four wheels, ah, satu dua tiga empat, ini adalah guna drum brake. Okay, this is a slightly different, uh, this one, lah. So this uses a drum brake system and not a disc brake system. Okay, now, so inside the drum brake, now this is what happens when you press the pedal. What happens is this thing is pressed according. To Sorry, astaga. Okay, so, <laughs> so the liquid causes the piston to press and then the piston will cause the brake shoes to move towards this one. The thing that is moving across this one, this is the wheel, uh, Kaupia, Roda. the blue thing that is moving is the Roda. So when you press the brake, okay, 
this black color thing over here will be pushed forward to stop the wheel. Okay, you see how the, the drum brake works? This is a drum brake. Lah. Okay, when we press on the brake pedal, the fluid will be uh, dikenakan pressure and the pressure will mengenakan force on this drum brake. Okay, and the drum brake will cause the wheel to stop. That's why usually in cars, uh, usually the back wheel kan yang lambat house in because the brake system on the back is actually a little bit better. Lah. This is a better brake system. Okay, because it causes the our wheels to slowly slow down. Okay, in the case of this brake, okay, this is like the this is like the brake bicycle. And so when you press on the brake, this is the front wheel, huh, people. Okay, so when you press on the brake, the brake will press on the master cylinder, the fluid will be pressed, okay, and then they are can mencengkam. Okay, the rotor, huh? okay, the rotor or otherwise known as the brake disc. Lah. Okay, if you All saw right. the I this one. By Jack the Gregory Brothers. Sure. Hold on now. <laughs> I don't know why my music is coming up now. So do Wow. Sorry, my house is... <laughs> I think there's a ghost in my house. Okay, anyway. So so this is the break this. Lah. Okay, this is the break this, which will be pressed. It's different, huh? Okay, it's different because this one is dia, dia macam mencengkam begini. Okay, manakala, the one that we saw before this, it pushes outwards to stop the wheel, you know, like that. Okay, so it's like two different brake systems altogether. The drum brake, which is the one that you see now, is pushing outwards to stop the wheel from moving. Manakala, the disc brake is exactly like the bicycle one. It clutches the thing. Dia akan mencengkam. Okay, dia akan mencengkam and then what will happen is the brake pad uh, will stop the wheel from moving and that's why usually the front wheels uh, of the car itu yang duluan dia punya brake akan anu, apa dia punya <laughs> dia punya brake akan rosak dulu lah usually the front wheel lah, because they use uh, you know the brake the disc brake system the good thing about the disc brake system is that it stops the wheel faster compared to the drum brake drum brake is a little bit slower Okay, it stops the wheel a lot slower lah. Okay, manakala this manakala this brake lah, brake this disc brake lah. Okay, yang tire depan itu dia betul-betul mencengkam and then you know kind of makes it stop faster. Okay, because it's exactly like the 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 bicycle wheel bicycle punya brake lah. Okay, bicycle punya brake. I don't know how many of you still play bicycle, but bicycle punya brake kan dia mencengkam lah. If this is the wheel kan, then it will crash like this. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't stop from the inside, it stops from the outside. Drum brakes stop from the inside, dia menolak keluar. Okay, manakala this brake lah, dia dari keluar, dia akan tekan ke dalam. Okay, and it will stop. That's why usually this brake lah, yang akan duluan house. Okay, so usually when people go and service their car, they will find that the front wheel brakes are usually the brake pads. Lah. Okay, the, <coughs> the brake pads over here. Okay, itu yang duluan mesti kena tukar. Because it's the first to go house, first to go house, <laughs> sorry. It's the first to, you know, kind of run out lah. Okay, compared to the drum brake. Drum brake, it takes a longer time to this one because, you know, they, they, like, they are kind of like all over the wheel lah. You see the drum brake over here, behind? They're much a little bit banyak ruang. When the color disc brake on this, it gets to just one place usually. Okay, and that's the biggest difference between the drum brake and the disc brake. Okay. Now I want to talk about the fluid now. The fluid inside the, this one. Okay, cecair di dalam kamu punya ini. So we don't use water. Okay, uh, nobody uses water. Nobody should use lah. Okay, never never put in water because water, uh, what will happen is when you put water in, uh, it will form uh, air bubbles. Okay, it will form air bubbles in the water. And that's not good because when you form air bubbles, okay, let me go back to this. Uh, okay. Let's say in this case, lah, when you have air bubbles over here, okay, if let's say this is not, if this is water, lah, so when you mengenakan pressure, when there's pressure and the pressure is being transmitted, lah, some of the pressure is going to be lost because it has to burst the bubble. <laughs> yeah, it has to burst the bubble in order for it to continue moving. And that's not a good thing because you want the pressure over here to be fully transmitted over here. 
We don't want the pressure to be wasted on air bubbles. Some air bubbles don't even help, you know. Okay, so that's why we use a better hydraulic fluid. We use a sp specific type of hydraulic fluid that has these characteristics. Okay, because if we use these characteristics, it does not form bubbles in the hydraulic system. So these are important characteristics of the hydraulic fluid. Number one, it must have a high boiling point because inside your car, it's going to get very hot. If you use water, water is just 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius, uh, your car can easily reach 100 degrees Celsius. Apa lagi, bertambah lagi kalau panas matahari. Okay, and we don't want that to happen because if water boils, it's going to run out very fast. Dia akan menjadi steam. And steam cannot help you. Okay, water can help you. So it needs to have a high boiling point. Okay, so that it doesn't uh, evaporate too fast. It must have a low rate of evaporation. Dia tidak mudah tersejat. Okay, if it's very easy to evaporate, kan, then balik-balik you have to change the hydraulic fluid, which is not good. The third one for me is actually the most important one. It does not form bubbles in the hydraulic system. Okay, because if there's bubbles, then the pressure will be used uh, to burst the bubble. And then, you know, Pascal's principle tidak boleh pakai sudah. Because Pascal's principle states that it must be fully and equally transmitted from the small piston to the large piston. Okay. Four, it must have a low rusting effect. Susah untuk dia mengasi berkarat lah. Okay. So that's why water is not a very good hydraulic fluid. We never use water for brake fluid. Okay. And it must have low density so that it can flow smoothly. Nobody uses chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Nobody uses liquid chocolate now for... Uh, for hydraulic fluid, okay, because okay, so liquid chocolate, yeah, you know, this is very extreme now. But liquid chocolate has a high boiling point. Okay, good. Susah untuk chocolate mendidih lah. It has a low rate of evaporation. But also susah untuk dia tersejat because it's so heavy. Okay, does it form bubbles? Huh. I guess it does form bubbles. Okay, it definitely has a low rusting effect. Okay, saya tidak pernah nampak lah besi yang menjadi karat kerana chocolate. Okay, but Unfortunately, it has very high density. Okay, and that's not very good lah because we want the brake fluid to flow. You want to press on the brake ah, and then immediately the wheel stop, you know. Not press ah, and then 10 seconds later, baru kamu punya roda mula berhenti. That's not very good. By the time ah, you'll be in accident. <laughs> okay, so we need to have a hydraulic fluid that has all these points. And one of the best hydraulic fluids uh, is oil lah, okay. Uh, I don't think they use oil. I think they panggil apa minyak pelincir ke itu. Dalam bahasa Melayu, I know it's called minyak pelincir. Okay. So minyak pelincir is actually a very good brake fluid. Okay, because it fulfills all these characteristics. It has a high boiling point, it has a low rate of evaporation, it does not form bubbles, okay, it has a low rusting effect and it is low density. <clears throat> okay. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of uh, examples. Sorry, uh, I'm trying to finish this subtopic as much as fast as I can today. So let's take a look at this. Lah. Okay, so we have a basic hydraulic system, small and big. Over here is two centimeters per segi, and this one is 50 centimeters per segi. When you have a force of 20 newtons, it pushes down by 20 cm. Okay, so we calculate the pressure transmitted in the hydraulic system. So the pressure transmitted in the hydraulic system can be either P input or P output. And since we have enough information for the P input, P output, okay, what we can do is we can do P input lah, because the P, out, P input must be the same as the P output. So P in is 20 over force over the area. Area is 2, uh, except that, oh sorry, this is 2. Huh? Okay, so we can use this now, 10, but this is Newton per centimeter square. Okay, be very careful with this unit. Okay, we don't use Pascal because it is not in meter square. If you want to use Pascal, if you want to use input pressure as Pascal, you have to change this to, to become meter square, which is a lot of work and we don't need that kind of work. So leave it as this, it's totally fine. Okay, now the force acting on the large piston is the P output. So the P output okay, is the same as the P input according to Pascal's principle, okay, P output will be the F out over the A out, 
Okay, and the P output will be 10. The A out is 50. Okay, so we can calculate the F out. Ah, sorry, 50. So my F out will be 50 times 10 will be 500. It's like uh, 500 newtons. So take a look at this, uh, guys. 20 newtons, now uh, you push with 20 newtons. 20 newtons is only about 2 kg. Uh, okay? But you get a force uh, of 500 newtons. Okay, which is about 550 kg. 50 kg worth of force. Okay, so that's why uh, Pascal principle is very useful for us. But the most important thing you need to remember is that the pressure is the same. The input pressure is the same as the output pressure. Okay, now the distance moved by the large piston, uh, hold on. Uh. Oh, okay, so the distance moved by the large piston, I think, uh, I think it's uh, A in, H in equals to A out, H out. I think so. Okay, I think so. Uh. So, you see, uh, because this area is 2, Okay, so the area is 2 of the input. The area of the output is 50. Okay, and since the, the height, uh, okay, the height of this guy moving is 20 cm. Okay, so the, when the force of 20 newton is applied to the small piston, it pushes down by 20 cm. So it will be 2 times 20. Okay, equals to A out times the H out. We need to know how much is this going to go up. Okay, and so we find that this will be 40 equals to 50 h out okay and so my h out okay will be about 0 0.8 cm which is kind of true lah. i think it will be true it will move a lot less huh? but it will move with a bigger force okay so i think this is the formula correct a1 h a1 h a1 h1 equals to a2 h2 i think so lah. <coughs> okay I'm saying this with so much confidence, but kan? Padahal, lama sudah saya ajar fizik, tapi saya lupa ni benda ni. Okay, I think is I think this is the case. Okay, what is important to note lah? Okay, what is important to note is this. Although this piston uh, is moving a lot down lah, uh, it is moving 20 cm down. Ini. It doesn't mean uh, that this piston yang besar ini akan bergerak sangat banyak. It doesn't mean that uh, It just means that it is going to move with a lot of force, tetapi kecil saja dia punya force sebenarnya. Okay, that's why when you see people when you see people jacking the cars, right? It's like a lot of effort to because it go up atas bawah atas bawah kan, and then the creator is like e, 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 e. <laughs> it's only a little bit to me. Okay, but uh, doesn't mean doesn't mean that just because the just because the height is so small, uh, that means the force is very small. It doesn't mean that at all. Okay, what is important to know is that the force is very big. It's just that because the area of the piston is very big, huh? so the height that it can actually move huh, is actually very small. Okay, jangan samakan huh, ketinggian benda ini bergerak dengan dia punya daya. It doesn't mean that. It can angkat, but it will angkat a little bit at a time. Okay, the magnification of the force, okay, magnification is A out over A in. Okay, as we have seen before, lah. so A out uh, is uh, 50 and A in is 2. So it is 25 times the force. Okay, which we counted just now. Lah. Original pressure, sorry, original force is 2 and then uh, the output force is uh, 500. Okay, sorry, original force is 20, sorry. Then the output force is 500. So it's 2 plus 5 kali ganda. Okay, 25 times the amount of force. Walaupun dia punya pergerakan itu sangat kecil sajalah sebenarnya lah. Okay, it only moves a little bit. But it moves with a lot of force. Okay. Alright, example number two. So, wow, I'm going really fast. I don't know why. Okay, so this is a hydraulic braking system. The cross-sectional area of the master cylinder is four. Okay, this is four. Okay, and then this is five. Okay, the front brake cylinder, this is 5. Okay, now when the pedal of the brake, which is this, is pressed with 12 newtons, okay, calculate the force exerted by the front brake. So we use the same thing. We calculate the input pressure first. Okay, input pressure is 12 over 4. Okay, 
if you're using meter squared, doesn't matter. You can don't even really need to write the unit lah, but the unit will be Pascal. Okay, then we kasih sama dengan output pressure because of Pascal's principle. Okay, so the output pressure we know it is three. Okay, the output pressure is uh, force. Sorry, the force yang kita mau kira bahkan force over. Oh, sorry, my mistake. My goodness, did I say four? It's four times ten to the power of negative four. Oh dear. Sorry, how much is this? Can you calculate this? 12 divided by 4 times 10 to the power of negative 4. It should be 0. No, it should be 3. 30,000? Yes, sir. 30,000? Yeah. Okay. So 30,000 newtons. So this would be 30,000 newtons equals to force over the area is 5. 5 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Okay. Oh, sorry, this is 30,000 30, Pascal. Oh, dear. Okay, so how much is this force now? How much is my output force? Can somebody calculate this, please? Hey, why do I feel that there's something wrong over here? Hmm. 15. 15,000. 15, 15,000. 15. Hey, oh, 15 Newton. Okay, yeah. So the force is, the output force uh, is 15 Newtons. Okay. So notice, uh, the input force study is 12. The output force will be 15 Newtons. Okay. Because the area is bigger. Lah. Okay. The bigger the area, then the bigger your force will be. Okay. Question B, why would the braking system be less effective if there are air bubbles found in the brake oil? Okay, then your answer will be the pressure is used to burst the air bubbles. Okay, so the pressure will reduce. Okay, some of the pressure is used to burst the air bubbles, to overcome the air bubbles. Okay, because air bubbles ni macam rintangan lah, we don't want. Okay, we want all the pressure to be transmitted smoothly, okay, and uh, and well. 